Okay, shall we read together? Begin. See, this is the relationship. The horizontal relationship with the vertical relationship with God and His Word. Now we have horizontal relationship with our fellow disciples, with our fellow Christians, that we should love one another. One another. Something that we have to show to each one every day. And we have this opportunity given that we have the social media. We can always communicate, say hi, God bless, I will pray for you. We can share each other's burden, each other's joy. You see, it's always a joy to be in a wedding. I do not want to miss weddings. It's always, it's always a joy. And it always expresses life, the happiness of life. And that is things that we should do all, always when we are here in the church. We should enjoy, enjoy each other's fellowship. We should be happy seeing one another. As I have said, mentioned before, the smile of a Christian is very nice to see because these are true smiles. They are not what? If it, uh, it's not true, it's what? Fake. fake. They are not fake smiles. They, they should be true smiles. And this is what we should look at one another. The other thing is that we should not only focus on ourselves, we should also focus outside of the church. And going out of the church, we need to witness. We need to share the Word of God. And that is the demand of the Lord Jesus Christ in Matthew 28, the Great Commission. Again, what is the Great Commission? Go ye therefore and preach. Okay, make disciples of all the nations. So this is the call for each disciple that each one of us should also make disciples. The question is, when was the last time that we followed this commandment of God? When was the last time that we were able to make a disciple? We should answer each one within our hearts. As uh, Pastor Tan said, what is the demand of God that we should love the Lord your God with all your heart? Ask your heart, what have I done for Christ today, last week, last month, last year, all the time that I was a Christian? And so this is basically the ministry of the disciple or this is the whole picture of what the disciple is there is the the ministry of the church the ministry of the church is what I do today teaching and preaching we also do the worshiping and the intercession we have the ministry of nurture but the church should also have the ministry of what evangelism so this fourfold picture of the activity of the ministry of the church should be found in Nuntaburi Christian Fellowship and to every member herein so this is the cross of the disciple this is the demand that Christ said to us that we should take upon our shoulders that we should all of this study his word pray a fellowship and then witness so we look at first his Lord our relationships our commitments to the church and also look at our resources we are a body the Apostle Paul pictures the whole church as a body and the body has what? 
Okay, my body has. I have. Hair, I have. Eyes, I have. Okay, nose. A lot of us, a lot of the churches have ears. Okay, what do they do with their ears? Okay, cheese, 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 cheese. Okay, cheese miss. <laughs> okay, we have the hands, we work, we have the feet to share the gospel. So, this is the body. And this is the resources that we have. And each one of us should have this kind of ministries. As I have mentioned always, each Christian, when you are called, you always have a gift. Christ has given each one of us a gift, a skill, a talent where we can use for His glory. And also that we should discipline ourselves as disciples of Jesus Christ so that we can follow all of this. So, looking at the person personality of a disciple, the simple thing that we should always ask ourselves when we do anything, whatever things we do is, am I doing this in a way that Jesus Christ will do it? If, I, if Jesus Christ is me, what will be his decision? That should always be the question that we should ask ourselves. Every day, are we walking more like Christ? That's why there is a need for us to study God's Word, especially the book of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Read the Gospels, read the life of Jesus Christ, follow that life. Follow that line. You will find the disciples. They are continually staying with the Lord Jesus Christ. And everywhere he goes, looks at him, hears at his word. Because this is what Christ wants them to do. Be like him. Christ like. And how can we become Christ like? As I have said, Christian life is an impossible life. It is not easy. Pastor Tan said what? The heart is most deceitful and is desperately wicked above all things. Who can know it? Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 9. Something that we have to remember. That on ourselves, we cannot be followers of Christ. We cannot live Christ's life. We have to have the power of the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 2, we see the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in the form of a fire, tongue of fire. And so everybody has a fire in their heads. It shows to us the power of the Holy Spirit. And a lot of times they were doing what? They were doing speaking in tongues. They speak languages that they did, do not know. So imagine we have Brother Yu here. We pray that we will have the power of the Holy Spirit for him. Even when we speak in English, he will be able to understand even he is Thai. In similar manner that when he speaks in Thai, we should be able also to understand. And we can pray for that. He is here, he is given the opportunity to hear us and also for us to minister to him. And so it will be a good time that we pray for the gift of what? That speaking in tongues. Okay? But there's really speaking in tongues that you cannot, you cannot understand, but speaking and understanding the tongue of Thai. And also him understanding the, the language of English. So these are things that we have to understand that everything is done through the power and feeling of the Holy Spirit. When we look at the body, our body, when we were created, we were created with the body 
and a soul. And that body and that soul is defined in terms of mind, will, and emotion. Uh, Pastor was explaining about the heart and he was referring to the physical heart. You know, when I, when I was studying Jeremiah chapter 17 and it says that the heart is deceitful above all else and is desperately wicked. And then when, I, when we are sp speaking about the heart when it was full of sin, one of the pastors would ask, can you, can you take my heart, open my heart, and can you distinguish the heart of a Christian and the heart of a non-Christian? <laughs> Will you open the heart of a Christian and it's white? And when you open the non-Christian, it's black? It's not something physical. Because in the Bible, when the, when the Bible talks about the heart, it talks actually about the seat of man's will it is the will of the man when it when it expresses the heart it's the will of the man the man itself the measure of the man and so the soul has the mind the will the emotions and this is what we find when God created man and then something he did when he created the man he placed what he breathed his he gave the breath of life he gave the spirit and these are the things that you have to remember we have the, the we talk always of body soul and spirit and when we die what what happens okay the spirit returns to God. That is what Ecclesiastes describes in chapter 12. The spirit returns to God, the body returns to dust. For dust it has come, and it from into dust it shall return. So, the creation, God created body, soul, and spirit, and the spirit is something that is supposedly coming from God. The Spirit is supposedly in line with the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God Himself. But then what happened in the fall, in Genesis chapter 3? Satan came in, in the form of a snake. And when he entered, he distorted, distorted the mind, the will, the emotion, or should we say the heart of man and then he more or less removed to the picture the spirit of God and what did he replace for the spirit of God the flesh the flesh our desire and so when Eve saw Okay, the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, he looks at it and lusts for it. And he said, wow, that's nice. It's nice to look at. It's nice to touch. It's nice to... Finally, what did he do? He eat it. Okay? So, that's what he did. He wants to satisfy his flesh. And then, what happened? Satan is now controlling man. That is the description in Ephesians chapter 2. Okay? That every Christian is dead in his trespasses and sins. And wherein the power of the air is the one controlling everybody. The whole mankind is controlled by the evil one. And that is Satan. So what happens here? is that when we become Christians, the Holy Spirit again comes back and gives us wisdom and there is now a struggle between the spirit and the flesh. You find that in Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7 describes the, 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 the experience of the Apostle Paul when he says, I want to do a thing, a good thing, I cannot do it. But the very thing that I do not want to do, I do. 
Each and every one of us has this struggle. If you do not have this struggle, you are not a Christian. If you enjoy doing things that are not pleasing to God, you are not a Christian. Because a Christian is, when he does something wrong, it does not please him. It, it's okay, but there is an internal struggle. Why is there an internal struggle? Because of the picture. There is the struggle between the flesh and the spirit. And the only way, the only way that we should be able to overcome is when we over overcome our flesh. When we overcome the flesh and the spirit dominates, that's what we call the spirit-filled life. We're in the spirit, we are now following the things that is of the spirit. And what are the fruit of the spirit? Okay. See? So a lot of us know what is or what is the fruit of the spirit. Okay. You said so many things, but Galatians 2.20 says the fruit of the Spirit is. What is the fruit of the Spirit? Love. 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 We are talking about February. We're talking about the month of love. The fruit of the Spirit is love. And everything else that follows is an expression of what love means. That is the expression of what is love. And so, when we talk about being a disciple, we talk about being victorious. And how do we, beca 